Welcome to CSC 239. We're going to review how to build your first relational database for our solution module using Microsoft Access. We'll import two data files, CSV files. CSV stands for comma separated value. And we'll combine them to create query relationships with joins. And then uh, once that's in place, what we'll have are two normalized data tables. We'll explain more when we get there. Once you complete each step, you'll have a complete application that you can use for logging data associated with turtle sightings. At the end of this recording, we'll put a link in here that you can access. You can check your own progress with the tasks in this video, but be sure that you substitute your own name in the new form entry at the very end as shown. You will submit five artifacts of proof for complete credit, four of which are screen views of completed tasks. And the first, the first artifact will be the data file import results with both tables created with a, with a primary key field that's named as specified. So the one primary key, we're gonna change the name to species ID number. So each species that's listed has its own special unique ID number. The sightings table will also use the um, a, a similar convention. Each sighting will have its own record number or ID number that's unique for each sighting. And of course, we're gonna name our tables T species lookup and T sightings, T for table. So we're gonna use descriptive methods to make sure that as we build this thing, we're, we're self-documenting uh, how we create the application. And our second, the second artifact that you'll submit will show the relationship or join between the two tables so that it's clear there's referential integrity and uh, the cascade Cascade deletes is enabled. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Um, and that's based on the one-to-many join. So we'll arrange the screen so that all that detail is captured for your second artifact. The third, uh, third submission or third criteria that you'll satisfy and the third artifact that you'll submit is a view of two queries. The first one that will be used to alphabetically sort the common turtle names in the species lookup table. And the second query is going to use the sightings table and the species detail so that once this join is in place, you'll, you'll begin to see how uh, the table joins allow for some very powerful queries. So we'll combine data elements from separate data tables. And that way we won't have to keep repeating that information over and over again to have useful and meaningful information. So that'll be the third artifact that's submitted. The, the last artifact or screenshot that you'll submit will show the completed citing entry form. And that view of the form will include the last record that you enter with your own name. So you're going to use your own first initial and last name um, in the observers field. And then finally, you're going to open up the sightings table. And at that point, you should see the data you just entered in that table. So the first one shows the record entry. The second half of that shows the sightings table with the matching detail. The last artifact that you'll submit is the actual database. And you'll use your first initial and last name like the example I'm showing here. Now, captures have to show sufficient detail. So if you're uploading images, you have to make sure the resolution is clear. And uh, otherwise, we can't satisfy the required criteria 
We want you to avoid use of a smartphone camera. It's okay to capture the screen of a smartphone, but the smartphone camera itself captures very large data files. And those large files are very difficult to upload. And oftentimes students have reported difficulties uh, submitting their solution. So you, you have to avoid that part. So let's get started. We've downloaded our two CSV files, comma separated files. And if you open these, you can see that the first row is actually the field names that we'll be using. They're descriptive in, in camel case, sighting date, species ID number, turtle nickname, observer name, and so on. The, the uh, species lookup CSV file shows the common turtle name and the Latin genus species name. So what we'll do here is import both of these. Now, after I downloaded them from the solution in Blackboard, the CSV files are in my downloads folder. And I'm going to, as long as I have Office 365 loaded, I'm gonna right click the white space, select new, and then select access database. The moment I do, it's gonna prompt me for a name. And since I know I'm gonna be using my first initial and last name, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And the screen opens. One of the ribbons that we need to expose for importing new data sources or data CSV files is the external data menu. And as soon as I click that, I have the option to import a new data source from a file. Now this is a text file, a CSV file is a text file. And if I browse and go to my downloads, I can see the species lookup right here. It's really important to accept the first default delimited because the data elements are separated by commas, comma separated values, right? So we're gonna accept the first default. And then we're going to say, hey, the first row contains field names. So we extract that first row of values for the field name. And then a very important thing we wanna do is to index this where there are no duplicates. So we wanna make sure that this, this table itself, doesn't have duplicate entries. That's very important for a lookup table in particular. In the next option, we're gonna let access add a primary key. And when it does, it's gonna create a field with the name ID, and we're going to modify that like we've already discussed. The name of the, imp the uh, table name that we want to use when this is imported is going to be T species lookup. And that's what we'll call it. I'm gonna say finish. I don't wanna save the import steps. I'm just doing this once, but if I were doing it many times, I could do this. When I select the table with my left mouse button, I can then use the right mouse button to select design view. And inside here, the first field name, instead of being ID, I'm gonna add num to the end, so id num, and I'm going to say species id number, right? Just num for short. At this point, I'll close the table. It says, do you want to save the changes? And I'm going to answer yes. So now my table is named t species lookup, and the key field or primary key is going to be named species ID number, right? I wanna take a look at it and see how it looks, I can do this. And if I double click the divider between the fields, it'll open it up so I don't cut off some of the detail here on the screen. I wanna display all of the detail. And at this point, I can take a screenshot of this and that's part of my first artifact. So this is the first table Take a screenshot of this. You can call that 1A. Now we'll go ahead and go to the external data option once more. Import from a file. I'll go to the downloads folder. 
and I'll select this time sightings data. Now there's a slight difference this time around. We're going to accept the first default value and the second default value and check the box so the first row is used as the field names. But in this case, instead of saying indexed no duplicates, we're going to say yes duplicates because we can we can we can affirm that when you're citing turtles, there are cases where you cite the same turtle more than once. Okay, so you could see the same turtle this week, next week, and next month, and so we want. We want a database citing application for turtles that's robust. You know, we want something that uh, is going to work uh, very elegantly, simple but elegant. So we're going to say duplicates are okay in the citing table. We'll click next. So we still want to index it, but we'll say duplicates are okay. And we'll say, yes, let access add a primary key. Just as before, we're going to add our own descriptive name for the table, T for table, so I know which kind of database object I'm using, T for tables, F for forms, Q for queries, and so on. This one is called the sightings table, so T sightings. I click finish, and I close this screen to import. So when I select the sightings table, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select it first, use the right mouse button to display the design view option. And then I'm going to change the default name for the, the, um, the primary key to read sightings ID number. So each sighting has its own unique sighting ID number. Let's check our name here. Let's see. It's sightings with an S. So we're going to have T sightings and sightings with an S. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure there's an S in there. Sightings ID number. When I close this, it's going to ask if I want to save it. And I can open this up, do the same with the the headers, I'm going to find my pointer um, and move it in between the lines. So when I double click, it'll expand automatically. And that way I don't lose detail when I'm viewing the table. I can take another screenshot and this is the second part of my first artifact. This is the other table. It shows table name and the primary key named like we want it. So if we look once again, we finished our first, we've submitted our, our two screen images for the first artifact. This is the first, first task completed. Now we're going to create uh, table relationships. So at this point, we're going to go into our um, database tools. And at this point, what I'm going to do is um, to keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and close the tables, right? So I'm going to save the view. I'll close each of the tables. I'll say yes. And now I have a relationships view. I'd like to come over to the right side where it says add tables and I'm I could I could add links and uh, queries and everything but I'm going to just leave the default as tables and I'll go ahead and double click sightings where we see the table uh, object with each of the field names and we see that the primary key is sightings ID number I'm going to double click my species lookup and this table is like that in a sense, it's related because if I hold this right next to it, you can see species ID number in one table matches up with the primary key in the other table. 
And if I click on this, hold my mouse button and slide it over and drop it on here, now the edit relationships dialog box comes up. We're going to double click on what is the line that's formed or the join that, that's created in just a moment. But I want to be sure that species ID number from the sightings table is listed alongside the species ID number for the T species lookup table. I'm going to select enforce referential integrity and then check both boxes for cascade, update and delete. Notice the relationship type says one to many because we know that duplicates were possible in the sightings table. Duplicates meaning more than one record for the same turtle. I'm going to go ahead and create this. And right away, you can see that I have a one to infinity, one to many relationship. Now to display the dialog box again, so that everything is showing all at once, I'm going to double click on this line and the uh, box reappears. So I can double click in the middle and it shows my settings. If I double click too close to the one, it opens up a blank. So be sure you double click on the thin line right here. It's gonna open this up. This is the screenshot that you need to save as the second artifact you submit. So this is a great place to pause and make sure you get a screenshot here. And this will be artifact number two. And we're done with the second task. So that's what we have now. And it shows the cascade, right, with referential integrity. The next task we're going to perform will build two queries. One will alphabetize the turtle names, the common turtle names in the lookup table. And the second one will take advantage of the join. When we build each of these queries, we're going to use a specific name because queries are a different database object. Our name will include lowercase q, so I know this is just my own convention. There's nothing that prevents you from using the word table or query outright. I just like using lowercase q, so I know I'm looking at a query. And uh, we'll name the query species by alpha. So let's take a look at how that works. If I close my relationships and save them, I'll say OK. If I close my relationships and save this, I want to select the species lookup table first. If I don't do that, when I go to the Create menu to select the query wizard, it's not going to pull to this table. So that's why I want to select it. I'll go ahead and click Query Wizard and then click OK and then use all of these fields from the species lookup table by clicking the double right arrow. They all come over at once. I'll say Next. Instead of using the funky name that uses that T, I want to use one that starts with Q. Uh, Q species by alpha, right? So that's what we're going to call this. Species by alpha, meaning alphanumeric, right? Ascending alphanumeric order. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And what I have now is the species ID number sorted. Well, that, that's what was uh, pulled from the, the, the table, the data set, and then the common turtle name and the genus name. And so far, this looks just like the table. So it's kind of confusing why uh, or what, what the big deal is here. But I want you to notice the common turtle names. We haven't turned on the feature to alphabetize the common turtle names yet. So we have leatherback, and green turtle, hawksbill, loggerhead. These are, these are not in alphabetical order. To do this, it's very simple. All I have to do is select the query on the left-hand side, then right-click it and go into design view. And then right here under the common turtle name, I'm going to select under sort the option to sort in ascending order. 
Now, as soon as I save this and view it, what you'll notice is that the common turtle names are now alphabetized in ascending order, green, hawksbill, Kemp's Ridley, leatherback, and loggerhead. Notice the species ID number has changed, right? So now the species ID number has changed and the Latin genus species have changed. So this is the first screenshot of our artifact that you want to capture. And now the next thing we want to do is create a query that includes all of the sighting data, but also the species lookup data. So this is where the join comes in handy. And if we build a query and the two tables are related, they're joined, then uh, we have something really powerful. We'll see in a moment. If I, if I go ahead and select the sightings table and then go back to create and then use the query wizard, I'm going to go ahead and select the first default. I'll select all of the items from the sightings table like I did before uh, with the lookup table. But in the sightings table, I'm going to do something extra. I'm going to hit the pull down and use, I'm going to use the query option. And now that I've selected the query option, instead of another table, I'm going to select the common turtle name, add that to the end, and the Latin genus species name. When I click Next, it's going to prompt me for a name. I don't want to use the suggested name because of my own naming convention. This is a query. I don't want the T to stay there. So I'm going to use Q. And I've already decided that I'm going to call this sightings including species. So I'm going to use INCL as an abbreviation for the word including just like I use num for number, okay? So sightings, including species. Q, sightings, including species. I'll hit finish. And now you see the information that's repeated is actually only stored once in the lookup table. When I look at my lookup table, I only have one entry for each type of turtle. But when I look at the query that includes the species information, anytime I have the same kind of turtle and that duplicate information is used, it's only pulled from a lookup table once. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you have a lookup table that's used over and over again, like the months of the year, or the days of the week, or uh, the members of a team, every time that relationship kicks into gear, the big value is all of your data that's used and listed once in the lookup table is used over and over again when people have to make sense out of the information. So here's the combined result that shows my sightings information, but it also shows information about the common turtle name and the genus species. So this would be the second screen capture. I would um, record, right? You wanna capture this with the print screen key. And that's going to be the second part of your artifact. So at this point, we've completed both queries. And we have a screenshot of each. The first one shows how the common names are alphabetized. And the second one shows how that query is combined with the table, the data table. So I can extend and see the relationships between that information. So the last thing I'm going to do is use that query to complete a citing entry form. Now, one of the reasons that we build forms is to help 
make data entry efficient. We want pull downs, we want consistent entries, otherwise we don't get good data. Garbage in, garbage in. So we build forms as a database object to prompt users to enter information when they're recording, when they're logging data about turtle sightings in a specific way. We're going to use, we're going to use the form to add information when we're finished building the form. And then we're going to look at the sightings table to see how that data populated into the table directly. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. This is a pretty simple process. To start though, I'm gonna go ahead and close all of the different things that I have uh, open so far. So I'm just gonna click each X box uh, each X to close it, and then I'm going to say yes to close it. I'm going to close my query and close my table. What I want to do is to select the sightings including species query. And this time, instead of clicking on form design, I'm going to click form wizard. So what I'll do here is add all of the information from the query that combines the table with another query. And I want this to list the citing information first and then the species lookup information. So this is selected and that's how I want to leave it. I'll click next. I'll leave the default for, for columns instead of tabular or data sheet. And I'm going to call this the since it's a form, I'm going to call it F sightings entry. That's the name of the form that I've chosen. Now let me just double check that to make sure I'm, yes, F sightings entry. So it's a form that's used for sightings entry. Now my database object, when I'm looking at it over here, I know what it is. It's a form, it's a query, it's a test, it's a report, R for report. M for macro, it automates things, and so on. All right, so I'm going to click Finish, and it's going to build the form. Now, the basic form is OK, but it lacks some information. And it's using the field names without the spaces for labels. So I want to pretty this up a bit, and I want to add some information to prompt the users. In order to do that, I'm going to reference uh, the previous changes I did when I was preparing for this uh, walkthrough. And I'm going to follow in each case what I do with the form. All right. So now that I go back to the form, I can select the form with my left mouse button, right click it, and go into design view. This is going to give me the same kind of screen that I that you see here. And the title of the form isn't really very intuitive. F sightings entry, most users would look at that and they'd say, uh, what the heck is this for? But if I say sightings entry, right? Could even add the word form if I wanted to. Sightings entry form, it's pretty obvious though. We'll just use, we'll just leave it sightings entry, right? Sightings entry. I'm gonna add spaces here in the labels for each of the fields, but I'll leave the actual data elements themselves just as they are so that they pull from the tables correctly. They're listed in the tables without spaces. So I'll go ahead here and click into here and add a space after the S, a space after the I between D and N. I'll come down the page like this and that's all I'm doing here is just adding a space so it's a little more readable. Turtle nickname. So the person who observes the turtle gets to give the turtle a nickname, right? The observer name. Common turtle name. This is from our lookup table. So this is from the other data set. Latin genus species. Now, it's always good to italicize the Latin genus species 
name. So I'm going to click on this right here so that the, it's highlighted. I'll highlight this particular uh, data element. And then I'm going to come over here on the right-hand side where it says font italic. And I'm going to say yes instead of no. So I'll hit the pull down and say yes. You notice now that it's it's here. Well, what other changes do I need to make? If I look, oh, I have some information that I've added. So I'm going to add some user prompts. I'll create a text field or a label uh, with, with a large box, larger box. And then I'm going to type this information out. Click to end of records for new entry, then enter citing date and enter the desired species ID number to automatically enter the common and the Latin names for the turtles cited, okay? And then you see here, I've listed them. One for leatherback, two for green, three for hawksbill, and so on. I have to make room between these data sets, uh, these data elements. So what I'm going to do is move the four at the bottom down a little bit and then create this box. So I have to move those four elements down. And in order to be able to do that, I'm going to, let's uh, control Z. I'm gonna move this down. So notice I grabbed the top border of the footer, not the bottom border. I'm gonna move this down to about here. Let's see in our diagram. Okay, we have, yeah, that's about right. So now what I'm going to do is I'll click down here and I want to click this white box for turtle name, nickname. And then I'm going to hold down the control key and click the next white box, the next white box, and the next white box. So I click the first one, then I hold down my control key on the keyboard. Next one, next one, next one. Now, if I circle my pointer around and then move it back over here, it turns into the crosshairs. And if I just grab it and drag it, I move all four of these all the way down. Now I have room for my box where I can type some information. I'm going to go ahead and select the label option up here because this is actually a label object. Um, I don't want to use a text box uh, because actually a text box is a type of database field. So the proper term when you have descriptive information is a label. So I'm going to go ahead and select label, and then I'm going to drag a generous box here that's about uh, one box high and, and so wide. If I look at my other object, that's about the size of it right here. Click to end of records for new entry. So I'm going to type in here, click to end of records for new entry. What else do I say? Then enter citing date and the desired species number. So let's make that a little less wordy. Then enter citing date and desired species ID number. Then enter date and what's that? The desired species ID number. I'm going to call this autofill. To autofill the entries for common turtle name and genus species. All right. So there we have it. One for leatherback, two for green, three for hawksbill.
Well, let's see. Let's do this. One for other back. Oh, there's an A in there. Got to spell it right. We want this to come down to the next line. There we go. So now it's down on the next line. We'll skip a couple of spaces. One, two, three spaces. And then we'll call the next one a green turtle. One, two, three. Uh, three is, let's see, what was it? Hawksbill? Hawksbill, Loggerhead, and Kemp, Kemp Ridley's. Hawksbill. Four is Loggerhead. Five is Kemp. Kemp's Ridley. I believe I have that right. Kemp's Ridley. That's that's proper, actually, I think. So let's add a few more spaces, just so it looks nice. Two spaces, two spaces, two spaces. Uh, let's add two more. Two more, two more, two more, two more. Then enter date and the desired species ID number to autofill. Actually, I think instead of the dash, I'm going to use the word for. One for leatherback. Two for green. That's a little clearer because I don't want people to try to type in three dash, right? So that's one thing about user forms. You want to be specific. Three, four, oxbill, four, four, loggerhead. I guess we'll take some spaces out now. Take a space out here, 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 here. Five, four, Kemp's Ridley. One more space, and that should do it. Or after the next one, almost there, bold and bold. If you take a little time to make a form look nice and keep it simple, then the users will have a better they're more likely to use it right so at this point what we want to do is shrink the box a little so we don't need as big a box and what we'll do is we'll move these elements up here again so i'm going to click hold down control click hold down control click hold down control click and then move the whole lot up to here again I can shrink my bottom border again. And now if I go to view this, what I have is something that's uh, pretty decent to use. Now I have this um, one issue here where the information didn't come down. So I'm gonna go back into um, design view and then Go ahead and enter a space, a couple of spaces. Maybe take out one or two here. Let's look at it again. There we go. One for leather bag, two for green, three for hawk, bill, four, and so on. So there's our form. And in order to use it, what you need to do at this point, we're on... Um, we're on sightings ID number two. And what we wanna do is move all the way to the end. In case, what I'd like you to do is to go to the last record. And what you need to do is follow the directions. Click, 
to the end of the records. We just did that for a new entry. Then enter the date. If I click into the date field, there's a little calendar I can use. I'll choose today's date. And then enter the desired species ID number to autofill the entries down here. Then all I have to do for data entry is put in the, the nickname if I'm seeing a new turtle and then my own name. So this is where you would type in your own first initial, a space, and then your last name with your first initial capitalized and the first letter of your last name capitalized. So we'll go ahead and put in species. Let's say this is a, a hawk's bill. I'm going to put in number three. And as soon as I click into the nickname, notice that hawk's bill pulls from the lookup table right? It automatically fills in. So instead of having to type all that out, instead of data uh, mistakes, you know, if some people put in hawks space bill, if they misspell hawks bill, if they misspell the, oh my gosh, if they misspell the genus and species, right? Then we have a real problem. But if we have a way of keeping the inputs uniform and precise and correct, then we have fewer errors. We have, instead of garbage in, garbage out, we have control. So the value of having forms, again, is to provide the database user with an easy, simple way to consistently enter the data so you have quality output. So I'm gonna enter a nickname. I'm gonna call this um, this turtle nickname, uh, the Rock, after uh, Johnson, right? And the observer name, uh, I'll use my own name here. I'll pretend to be somebody else, though. I'm going to be um, uh, Florence Nightingale, OK? You're going to use your own first initial and last name. So as soon as I enter this and I click to the next record, I've got a new data, I've got a new data form ready to go for the next data entry. But uh, what I want to do is capture the screen showing my entries here. This is the screenshot you need for the first part of your fourth artifact. And then I want you to go ahead. If you go to the next record, you should be able to go into the sightings table. And lo and behold, here's the rock. And it shows F Nightingale. Now, I want you to notice that in the data set for sightings, the species information isn't in there. OK, so that's what we mean by normalizing a table. It's only the related information for a sighting, right? that uh, we include in the structure of that table. When we look at the species lookup, it's only the information that we need to look up the species. That's the only information we have. But we relate the two, and now we have a powerful way to connect related sets of information and do it efficiently, and then determine relationships and patterns in that data. That concludes, so this last capture would be uh, the second half of your fourth task, where you show the sightings table with the new data in there. And then the last thing you want to do is simply close your database. And then upload your database. Uh, you're going to upload the database. I think it might be in here. You're going to upload the database along with, that's, that's the fifth item that you need right here. Now, if you find that Blackboard does not accept your file with the ACCDB file extension, that's for Access Database, then what I want you to do is to change the name. This is only if you have a problem. Change the name extension 
just the, just the extension to txt. And when, when you hit enter, it's going to say, are you sure you want to change the data type? That will let you upload. That will let you upload your database. When I download your database, I'm going to change the name extension back to ACCDB. And that's just the workaround to upload data files that Blackboard thinks might be malicious.